All right, so today we're doing something a little different. We're going to give an upgrade to the Jeep and it's for safety reasons. Uh, we've discovered kind of just from experience that it is nicer to be able to see all around you really well to make sure you're not gonna run into something, go off an edge, anything like that. And so we are gonna add in to, uh, the, D to the XJ a system that has a big screen for adding backup camera and of course a front camera as well is we're taking this existing console that uh, is only really built with the factory single din radio space and we're going to replace it with a double din that will allow us to have a screen here and it's really great because there is a kit that you can get which i have right here and it's got already the custom double din space there for you. All the other two spots uh, where the climate controls are and the switches for like the fog lights and, and wiper and um, defroster are, those still are on here. It's just that it changes this upper space and it gives you access to adding a screen in here an upgraded radio we will reuse these little pieces but the rest of it this whole frame gets replaced now behind it there's a little bit of work to do um and it's real small not not a big thing uh to turn it into a double den care um, position it um, involves a little bit of some cutting on the vents uh, just the conduit that the vents, the ductwork that the vents is, but it's real small. And this kit actually comes with the pieces on the inside of it that we will need to do that repair job. All right, so more to come. We will show you how to install a double den into uh, an XJ. All right, so we're ready to get started on pulling apart the radio and the center console. So here we go. Now this just pops out, you just kind of pull on it. It's got little tabs. And same up top. Just like that. And it just slides out of place. And now we have access to all of the radio. So it's a number 10 socket that's currently holding this radio. That may not be the actual size because it's not a factory radio, so. And there it is, and it's a mess. So, you now obviously I have to figure out what these all do, uh, where everything everything goes to hook up to the new radio. But what's important right now is inside the area right here, it's this I'll have to notch to get the double din to slide in. And over on this side, similar action. We'll have to notch it. But as you can tell, there's plenty of room for a double den to actually go in there. I gotta check with the new radio, just kind of see how it sits in there. Um, but then probably, probably gonna have to notch that and this. There we go. And the radio is free. Obviously not the original radio, but an aftermarket one that was put in at some point. Not by me. I guess it's time to look to see what the actual radio has for plug-ins. The new one. So this is the radio I got. The It's an Alto S8. The only reason I went for this one is it had the actual Apple CarPlay as part of it. It wasn't an aftermarket Apple CarPlay. It was an original. And it does have the... Android version, which I don't remember what it's called, Google Play or something like that. Anyways, works, uh, ties wirelessly and wired, it does both, to your phone uh, to run the Apple CarPlay or whatever the Google version is called. It's one of the reasons I bought this one. However, I have never used one of these. I've never even heard of this brand, so I have no idea how good it actually is. Uh, so, GPS. I'm assuming the antenna. Power. And the adapter that plugs into the back. Now, uh, there's your microphone again. 
But then all the rest of these, these would have to be individually wired. I could have got, I couldn't find a wiring harness directly from what I had to this one, so we'll just see. Might be a long day. Uh, microphone, although I'll probably use the current one that I have because it's already mounted in place. It works pretty good. Mounting brackets. Comes with screen protectors, two of them, so that way uh, I'm not scratching the face of the uh, actual unit. And it comes with a little ring thing for adjusting the size in case uh, you need to kind of fill the space a little bit more. We'll have to see. I don't know what I'll need or not need. And then down below is the actual unit. There it is. So, just kind of a standard unit right there. Just some buttons on the faces. It is touch screen still, of course. But then look at that. Look how thin it is. It has no depth to it. Unlike old style double dens were super big. This is nice and flat. So I don't even know that I'll have to cut that much of the inside uh, duct work. And then this wires in. Most of the plugs will be self-explanatory. So that's nice. All right. See how it goes. So here's the new face plate. The duct ceiling strips. Mounting brackets. And directions directly for the XJ. So on the old panel you gotta take out these little clips. And each of the positions. And install them on the new one. So on the original panel, fit over these with these little clips and you just use a little screwdriver to lift those tabs up and they slide right off. There is a total of three on each side, so six between the whole panel and you get to just use them onto the new panel. So I've got the clips in place. They went in pretty, pretty easily. I just used a screwdriver to push down on each of the sides. Um, just to kind of slide it on nice and easy. Take your time. Don't try to break anything. Um, and so now I want to test fit it into position. And that's what it looks like. Uh, I got to put the vents in, of course, but the space is there. I didn't move any of the controls or any below. It does say in the directions I might have to take the screws out just to lower it out of the way for, for the cutting purposes, but then they'll go right back into place. But right now, I just wanted to know what does it look like with it that sitting that way. And with the screen. i got to see, does the screen even fit in there? That's, uh, that's another big question. It fits right in there perfectly. So I won't need that extra ring thing that I could get for this, but I, don't, I won't need that at all. It's there. So, perfect. That's good. Good news. I'll have to trim that spot where the red is. And that's the edge of the duct, so I might have to just just a little bit of shave off of it. Just to bring the radio over. Not even very far. What is that? Like a, maybe an eighth inch? Just so it'll fit on on both sides. So that's pretty good. That's what it'll roughly look like when we're done. I'll have... Climate control still original, controls down below still original, and then just the vents still original, and then it'll just be a double din. So the new wiring harness is all labeled. Um, tells you exactly what each piece is. So that's good. Helpful for... What I'm having to do is take the old harness, uh, which is in weird pieces. This is the old the radio I pulled out. These I assume were the connections that were adapted from the original into this harness. So I'm using what this harness's diagram on the one I pulled out to help me match up the wires to the new one. 
This though will go away and I'll be left with just these two, which means it'll tie directly back into what I have. Diagram from the radio I pulled out. So I finished the wiring harness uh, using the original plugs based off the diagram of the new wiring harness and the old wiring harnesses diagram. And it turned out that whoever originally wired this wired it good. So that was that was nice. All the colors matched. And as you can see, there are some that are not used uh, just because my vehicle is so old that they don't have a lot of these things. Like, for instance, this is an amplifier. I don't have an amplifier in this vehicle. Uh, there's this one, the pink one here, talking about a rear camera. I don't have a rear camera. I'm putting one in, and it hooks up totally different, not through this harness. So anyways, uh, it's ready to go. I get to now just plug it in, and we'll see how it works. All right, last connection was the power. So everything else is connected. We'll see how this goes. There we go, those two are connected. Now we get to connect the radio. It's in. So, moment of truth, let's see what happens. Got power, I can see the lights on the screen. There it goes. Close my door. Wow. Let's see. Can you plug in the camera and see if that works? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Mute. What? I just hit that right there and it mutes. Oh, okay. Good. Um, front camera. And back camera. Rear camera. Rear camera. So put it, turn the key on and put it in reverse. Is the key on all the way? Yeah. There you go. So maybe you have to tell it it has a camera. Oh, it's on. That's weird. Did you do anything? Well, I unplugged it. Plugged this camera in, then unplugged it and plugged it in again. So maybe it just. Well, because I noticed on the. So I went to apps and I noticed that there was rear camera came up. But I'm in reverse. So I don't know what the deal on that is. So after a little bit of investigation and trial and error, we discovered that in order to get the backup cam or camera to activate when you go into reverse and at the same time when you just want to turn it on for live we had to run a secondary wire back up here and it connects to this uh, rear um, camera that I previously had nothing to and that allowed for it to have the live view in addition to going into reverse so that was kind of a unique thing. And then uh, we had to take the wire that came with the video. Uh, there's a red wire that sometimes was used and sometimes isn't based on whatever 
camera on whatever stereo model you bought we figured out we had to actually wire it to the uh, ex the ignition accessory um, piece which uh, I'm now going to fix because this is only a temporary thing but I've got the got this wire up here though to go to the rear camera and then we figured out we had to wire this to the red accessory and then they work uh, then I can uh, just hit the button for live and then when I pump it into reverse it automatically turns on now but anyways the directions explained it all uh, that came with the radio so we just had to read it a couple times to find it and how it worked all right we are down to the last little bit of this um i actually ended up modifying the brackets instead of the inside space other than just one little spot where i cut off uh where it was supposed to because my double din is not a true double din it is not deep it's really shallow um, on the radio. I didn't need all the space that they were having me cut off. So let me show you I only cut off this stuck out a little bit further and I just cut it off flush because it's gonna it's it's even with where it was supposed to mount the bracket and Then I cut it back just a little bit because it was it was a little bit too wide So that's the only cutting I did of the entire vent It wanted me to cut this whole section out and along with this whole section out right there and I didn't need to because my radio is not a true double den now if you have a different double den radio then you'll need to but I also modified the brackets on the side so this was a square before on both cases and we just cut those out and same with back over on this other side this allowed me to not have to cut everything else out and that was it that was the only cutting I had to do in the space here and outside of that it fits right in it took a little bit kind of negotiating on how much to cut and how much not to cut and it's ready to go all right so there is the finished product all put together all put in there and i've got uh, uh all the navigation maps and everything whatever i need to do uh i do notice that uh car link works good so i just hit the car link and then there is my um apple carplay uh, features and I can go to uh, mapping systems I can go to Pandora I can go to my messages phone calls um, anything that you would typically need right off from your phone for inside the car yeah overall it works pretty good um, I like it so far I still got some things to learn like um, all the little specifics there you go backup camera is on and yeah so this uh, this finishes this nice little project. I up upgraded the Jeep more safe now. That way I don't back up and hit anybody um, or I get too close to an edge.